Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, I'm Frank Michel. I'm going to present a work that we called, sorry, uh, that we called Savoir Faire. Um, just wait a second. And so just to go on, uh, I'm the last author. The two first authors could unfortunately not make it to be here today. So I'm going to present their work. Okay, cool. And I'm not in focus. Yes. So as you know, there are lots of available data sets on the web, open data sets. They might be available through open data portals, through the link open data. But as a potential data consumer, uh, I may need, uh, it may be sometimes really trial challenging to figure out which are the best data sets for my own needs. So most likely data portals come with uh, faceted search engines that allow you to search data set by keywords or authors or dates or topics or whatever, but sometimes this is not sufficient because what I would really need as a data potential data consumer is to measure some sort of quality measures about the data sets so that I really find the one that, that actually meet my needs. So when we talk about quality, we talk about fitness of use, but that remains a very uh, uh, confusing terms term. And uh, what it can mean, it depends really about uh, the use case, the users, the values, and there are lots of different choices. For instance, I might be interested in very accurate data or data that comes only from very trustworthy sources. Um, I could be uh, interested in fresh, very recent data or with data that is served by only APIs like Sparkland points that are highly available. And there are also lots of other quality scores like uh, fairness, humor score, accountability. So um, I may want to apply all these kind of scores to the data set to figure out which is the one that I really need. And besides, how do I compare those measures and how do I choose one of them? So what we would need in the end is really to have an approach that would allow for the evaluation of different data set quality metrics in an open and extensible manner. So I would need a way to easily define new quality measures. Uh, I would need a way to compare their definitions, that is the methods behind those quality measures, and that calls for a declarative definition, description of the quality measure. Uh, to do that, I will need to interact with the data sets in the same way. I have, if I have very different uh, query interfaces, it's gonna be more difficult to compare what I'm doing. And uh, eventually, of course, I would like to compare the results, the actual results of these quality measures. So what we propose is to use a framework that we have developed in the previous work called INDEX, INDEX with a G, uh, which is uh, basically a framework for profiling knowledge graphs or data sets. I may use bo both words uh, interchangeably. Uh, and those data sets uh, being RDF data sets available through public Sparkle endpoints. So what index does is that it builds an index of Sparkle endpoints and of the data sets that are actually served by those endpoints. So we'll it will harvest every existing data set description, the metadata basically, and it will try as much as possible to extend this description with uh, content that is extracted using rules and a rule consist consists of tests and actions. A test is basically a Sparkle query. It could be an ask or a select query. And that action is a Sparkle update, which will in turn update the index that we are in the process of building, which is itself uh, an accessible knowledge graph and so on. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is to illustrate how we have used index to uh, implement and compare two different quality measures for RDF datasets. And uh, those two measures are the fairness and the accountability. So I probably don't need to tell you about fairness, but I will do, do so still. Uh, this fair means uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, interoperable and reusable, and it's a set of principles for describing datasets. Uh, and it can be the principles uh, do are derived in multiple sub-principles uh, and you can interpret them to come up with some sort of fairness score, which is based only on, on the metadata. Uh, so you can interpret those principles in different manners, in different contexts. For instance, there are some tools that measure the fairness of ontologies, like Ofer and Foops. There are some tools for more general data sets like uh, Fairchecker and Fuji, and some of them are maybe dedicated some to some domain uh, like life sciences. 
Also, there are different implementations. If, if you look at Fuji, it's a pure Python implementation. If you look at FairChecker, it basically consists of a set of Sparkle queries. So in our case, what we wanted is to have a fairness measure within the context of index, that framework I just presented, which is based on an RDF description and Sparkle queries. So what we've done is basically to reuse FairChecker all the Sparkle queries in FairChecker and just port them and adapt them so that they can be run within the context of, of uh, index. So the second measure we wanted to compare with is the accountability of the dataset. So when we say accountability, uh, this is to be understood as uh, how the data has been produced, uh, by whom, for, for which purpose and so on. So it's about transparenc uh, traceability, transparency and trust. And this work is actually based on a theoretical model called LIQUID, which distinguishes the three main steps of the life cycle of datasets, which is the data creation or collection, uh, the maintenance and the usage. And for each of those three main steps, you have a, a, a set of so-called WH questions, who, when, where, what, and how, which is not a WH question. Um, so just to give you an example, if I say uh, in, the, in the step data, data usage, I take the who in one of, one of the who questions would be who is the intended audience of this data set. And what we will do in this accountability measure is to figure out whether among the metadata I found this information about whom is, uh, who is the intended audience. And I will uh, create a score and so on. And fortunately enough, well, because these are uh, partners, this accountability has been implemented in index. So same thing, it consists of FD descriptions and Sparkle queries. Okay, so in the end, we have uh, the two quality measures implemented in index with the same technologies, same standards, and we can now start comparing them. So the first thing we can compare is uh, their definitions, that is what, what they do actually measure, what are the methods behind this, because they are written in Sparkle and RDF. So we can, we can see what they do clearly. So uh, when we've done this, this study, the first thing that is a uh, very basic observation, let's say, is that there is a clear overlap between the two me measures because they use more or less the same metadata. They, use, they try to look for licenses and authors and things like that. But yet when you get into more detail, what, what you see comparing the Sparkle queries is that they do this in a very different manner. Fair checker will usually be more focused on things like uh, good practices, like is the, are the URIs dereferenceable, or uh, is there a sufficient number of well-known vocabularies that will be a good sign of the reusability feature in Fair. Um, uh, about the way that the metadata are tested, it, it's also slightly different. Usually fair checker will just look for a piece of information that's given by one triple. So it says, okay, we could have two, three uh, properties for two, three vocabularies, but just one triple. In the case of, in of the accountability, it does something slightly different. It will expect the, c the uh, conjunction of several pieces of information to get to the, to the goal. So. I'm not getting into the details here, that's not the point. My point is just to illustrate that having those two quality measures defined in the same standards, in the same framework, makes, makes it very easy to compare them just from the methodology part. Uh, and also, of course, my point is not to say here that one is better or the other. It's just, again, to account for the differences. Uh, so the second thing we can do is to compare the actual results because we can actually enact those quality measures within index. So we run these, these actions, uh, and, we c and in the end, we get the, the scores for, for both results, for both metrics. So this is a graph of the accountability as a function of the fairness. And the, the first thing we have noticed here, which was not so much expected in fact, is that there is a very low correlation in the end between the two measures. So it is somehow surprising because they, they pretty much use the same metadata, but they do it in a very different manner. So it confirms that those two different quality measures actually measure something really different, even though they use the same metadata. Uh, second uh, way of seeing this is to just draw the, the scores, the actual scores of the fairness in blue and the accountability in red, so here, okay, basic observation. It seems to be much easier to be fair than to be accountable. Uh, again, I'm not getting into the details here, this is not the point, but again, you have this uh, 
all these evaluations represented in the same framework with the same standards. So it makes it very easy to compare the definitions and the results. Okay, so a few elements of discussions. Um, for data set uh, creators, you would be interested in how your data set will be evaluated by different quality measures. And there are some th th things you have to wonder and to think about. Uh, the FAIR principles of, of, are, of course, very, very important, but in fact, there are multiple ways of describing a data set. So you could use multiple vocabularies. Uh, so pretty often you have uh, community-specific vo vocabularies like HTLS, which is uh, the vocabulary for describing data set in healthcare and life sciences. You have DCAT profiles for all sorts of domains. Uh, in the case of specific case of RDF datasets, it is not even clear what a dataset is. Actually, there is no agreement there. Is it a set of all the set of data available through a Sparkle endpoint? Is it a set of name graphs? Uh, there was also debate about whether an ontology is a dataset. It's not even clear. So you see, you have to think about this, these things before uh, you describe your data set because that will impact the way quality measures will be, the, the result of the quality measures on your data. Um, second thing, for quality measures to be used, so if you're interested in defining quality measures, uh, for people to understand and trust your quality measure, it needs to be transparent. And typically data portals, like the one I presented, INDEX, um, they create dataset descriptions that eventually will become outdated. So you need your, your portal to provide a lot of provenance information and traceability so that you say, well, the data set evaluation has been done on this date, on this data, and we have extracted this metadata and constructing this other one. So this is something very important, and this is something we have largely focused on in index, and all the metadata, all the provenance and traceability data is available as part of the whole index. Um, okay, just a few takeaways. So I've shown you how we have used this framework index uh, to declare and ev evaluate several quality metrics. Um, the, the, the quality uh, measures are declared using RDF and Sparkle, which are declarative languages, so it makes it e easy to, uh, to compare them. The results are also machine readable. They are also expressed in RDF with the same model. And all of that makes the comparison of, of the, the two different measures very easy, or any kind of measure. So we have applied this to the case of the fairness and accountability, which despite the fact that they use the same metadata, account for different realities and different aspects of the quality of the, meta of the, the data sets. Uh, I have insisted on the, the, the issue with the provenance and the uh, traceability of what we are doing. And maybe just a limitation is that uh, this framework is designed and uh, usable for experts, or at least people who have certain mastery of RDF and Sparkle, which is not the case for everyone. So it, there might be some work here to extend this and make it more accessible to non-semantic web people, I would say. And with this, I would take a few questions if we have time.